I got money on my mind. I'm just trying to get some dough. I ain't picking up my lot unless it's money on the phone. Now I want to move forward and move on into your rap career, mm -hmm. my brother. Um, the way that you were able to gain some success, the way you were able to rank number one in France, the way you was able to get a million number streams. Number three overall. Yeah. Man, that's, yeah. not, that's not nothing to play with. Number three on the charts on iTunes, straight independent is nothing to play Hell with. Hell no, nah, man. So I, I kind of want to talk about the ways that you were able to learn and navigate. And I heard you mention it earlier what you were doing on uh, Periscope on your Sundays where you add people to playlists. Mm -hmm. I think you were really, really innovative with that. I don't even think you knew what was about, oh, what you were doing, like no. what was about to pop off. So I kind of want to go into some of that, my brother. Man, that's, it is crazy. And that's why, you know, going back to Shadi's quote, he needs to send me some royalties for this. I'm shouting this nigga out nonstop. But going back to his quote, when you put in that two years of work, like a part-time job, you start seeing the gaps. I talk to the pond all the time about, look at the gaps. See, there's a gap in every single industry. And so... I kept seeing all these gaps inside the music business. I was like, okay, what one can I feel? And one night we was on Periscope and we were just having a conversation. Somebody said, hey, Dorian, did you hear about Nelly? I'm like, nah, what happened? They said he owes the IRS like $40 million or something. I was like, damn. Jeez. So I went and looked it up because I always had to fact check because they might just get in there and start lying. So I started fact checking. I saw, I came across an article on Business Insider and it talked about how much Nelly owed. They only know it was 40, but it, he owed some money. And inside of the article, they embedded tweets. And in the tweets was from his fans. And his fans said, hey, man, this is how many streams we're going to have to give of Nelly for him to pay off his tax debt. Somebody had did the math. Let's stream his music all night. At this time, y'all, I probably had a thousand plays total. I'm talking on SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, people at my church who ain't, I ain't talked to in 10 years. I probably had a thousand plays total across the board. And I was like, damn, that streaming shit work? This is 2016. And I was like, you know what? Let's do this. I'm talking to the pond on Periscope. Let's have my song, Don't Sleep. Don't Sleep. Stream it all night while you sleep. You can't do this anymore. Spotify shut you down. Stream it all night while, while we sleep, and let's, and let's see what happens. They did. Two days later, I checked my account on Spotify at 2,300 streams. I was like, what the fuck? Like, because I've been making music for two years. And I had twice as many plays total than one. I was like, oh, this streaming shit works. And I knew that I was going to get paid from it. So I was like, how can I get more streams? I was like a crackhead, like Pookie. And so I went to Google and I started just looking up how to get more streams. This was really early. And I forgot whose blog I came across. And they were breaking it down. And they talked about playlists. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. So then I started hitting up Spotify playlists on my own. And I really figured it out. And at the time, playlists was like the wild, wild west back then. These people will work at Cracker Barrel. And they have a playlist with 10,000 followers and everybody's listening to the music on there. So if you hit them up on Facebook, like, hey, man, I got 22,000 followers on Periscope. You have my songs on playlist. I'm going to shout you out, hopefully to get you some more followers, all that. He was, okay, cool. So they would add my song to a top three spot. And I would get streams. I just kept getting more and more streams. The checks kept getting bigger. And that's how I passed my first 1 million streams on Spotify. And I, and I can't even lie, man. Like, being an artist who I started from scratch, I didn't pay my rent in my studio apartment in Chicago and took my tax check to buy my first computer to learn how to make music. I watched hours and hours of YouTube videos, you know, getting doubted. My first album got shitted on. For me to get a million streams, man, somebody, my music got played a million times. I cried. I can't even lie. I cried, man. I was like, damn. And I got paid off of that. And so I learned that playlisting was fucking powerful. And that mm -hmm. feeling I felt, I said, every artist deserves to feel this. You mm -hmm. deserve to know that people are listening to your music and you got paid from it. So I always kept that inside of my mind. And at the time, I was still doing the SoundCloud stuff. But I kind of went away because SoundCloud, they, they weren't paying. So I yeah. went over here to Spotify. So kept doing it, kept shopping my songs to playlists for years. Like I'm putting in work. And then one dude I'd hit up, he had added already like six of my songs. I had a new single. I hit him. He was like, Dorian, I, uh, I sold the playlist. It's like, the fuck you mean you sold the playlist? He said, I sold it. I'm like, why did you sell it to me? And, and he, I was like, how do, you, how do you sell it? And I forget dude's name. Man, he gave me the sauce. Like, he broke it all down. Like, you, you go, to, go to Twitter, and there was like a Twitter help 
Twitter care page and you had to have your address and the credit card and all that. And people could transfer playlists from one person to another. I said, mm-hmm. how much did you sell it for? He said, man, I sold it for a hundred dollars. <laughs> What? What are you talking about? hundred dollars? What do you mean? <laughs> so, so you know what I did? At the time, I had this database. Guy, I've been shopping my playlist, shopping my songs. So I went, I hit everybody up. Like, yo, I want to buy your playlist. Six of them hit me back. So I bought their playlist. And I was buying them for me. It's like, damn, now I can add all my music and I can just get all the plays. But I realized at that time, I own my own distribution network. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, other artists gonna want this too, so let me start charging for playlist places. Not all people mm-hmm. look at, listen like Spotify frowns upon that. Fucking Universal, Warner, and Sony got equity stake in Spotify. I don't want to hear that shit. Okay, I'm an independent artist, nigga. We gotta get it how we how we get it. And so once that happened, I started adding artists to the to the to the playlist. I start charging for that, and then that started giving me some working capital. And then that's how my brand kind of took mm-hmm. off and how I got into the playlist game. Hmm. So Man. was was that kind of like the birth of Group 82? That's exactly was the birth of Group 82. Be, because I always had Group 82 because 8 to August 2nd, that's my birthday. But that was just my label, like everybody who has a label. But I didn't know, once I got my million streams on Spotify, that was great. But that was some hard work. Mm-hmm. That was only $4,000 too. At, at the time, my job was paying me $5,000 a month. I was like, if, I ha- if I'm going to leave, I got to find a way to match this income. What else can I do? So once I got the playlist, I was like, okay, that's a great feature. Kind of like the eggs at the, at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. That's going to bring people in. Cause they're going to be attracted to that. The, the plaques, they like all that, but I can't have my entire family's livelihood dependent on Spotify playlists. Cause if they take the playlist then I'm done. So what else can I offer when I was coming up and still now, it was so hard to get an artist's website done, so hard to get a biography written, so hard to get cover art, so hard to get a beat store, a merch store. There was nobody that was offering this. So I filled the gap. Mm-hmm. I started seeing other people who were doing it, but they weren't me. They weren't black. They weren't unapologetically them. They weren't rapping. It was like these rock dudes who used to be Led Zeppelin's manager. And man, nobody would hear what the fuck that you got to say, dog. Like, so I knew there was a gap. The Mm. the music, the independent music business game needed a real nigga who wasn't subscribed to none none of these labels. None of that industry bullshit. Exactly. And I used to coach college basketball, so I already knew how to talk to them. I already knew how to talk to that demographic. All those years of engaging on Periscope, I knew what they responded to. So I just took my personality and I brought it to social media and I became like the spokesperson for Group 82. And then, man, that shit, that shit changed my life, man. Hey, hey man, I love it. And I remember because I was watching one of your videos and I watched all the way to the end and you're talking about Group 82. I was like, let me go check this, this site out, man. I was like, oh, this nigga got products, nigga. I was like, oh, <laughs> this nigga's making yeah. money. It's not like, just music. I told that to David. I was like, hey, man, take this shit out. I was like, oh, you can get your website done. Yeah. If I was like, he's charging niggas to get on these playlists. I was like, oh, he making this bread. Mm-hmm. Got to, man. That's, that's, uh, you know, we got some stuff rolling out for, for this year. And anybody that's been paying attention to my content, you know I'm becoming more universal for entrepreneurs, not just the, the music business. But once, like, this playlisting era ends, I'll really give y'all the insight to the financials and everything because it's going to be a, a great study and, and probably a great case study down the line for the minimal investment that I put in and what I got back and what it did for me. Man, it, it literally, I'm not joking. It, it allowed me to leave my job. It's made me more money than I've ever made in my life. It's got me more residual income. It's built my brand. I mean, it's got me verified on Instagram. It's the reason that my YouTube's up. That investing in those playlists literally changed my perspective on everything, and it, it changed my life. Mm-hmm. And one thing I love about your story, my brother, is like with Group 82 and the way you built it out, I love that it's like you said, you fill in the gaps. You didn't try to go out and and do a bunch of different shit that was unrelated to music. You built out everything within the realm you were already in. So like now at this point with Group 82, how many different streams just in terms of like products, services, things that you offer that have you built outside of just making music? 
Yeah, so we got group, group 82 Music. It's all, that's the whole music arm. We have Group 82 Media. Um, so in the midst of me trying to figure out this social media shit, I had to learn ads, right? Facebook and Instagram ads, I got to advertise the, the business. I can't depend on content going viral for us to get sales. Not a marketing and, plan. No, not at all. And I used to do like everybody else do, hit boost post, right? Hit promo, right? And it would get some, I'm like, I know this ain't what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> and so I remember one time, this was uh, this was like 2016, 2017. I was still working for somebody. And I went into Facebook ad manager to like, okay, so I don't know if y'all know Keita, the uh, dance kid. Like he did the song. He had a video with, with the song Cut It, him and his sisters. And yeah, I know like, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can really, really dance. Dance yeah. with Usher. So um, I had found him online. And I, and I was talking to his mom and they did a video for my song, Don't Sleep. And that really gave it a push. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take this key to dance video and I'm going to put a, I'm going to run a Facebook ad on it. I'm going to just go to Facebook ad manager. It's going to take like 10 minutes. Man, I walked into Facebook ad manager, dog. Yo, that shit I, got a, music. I got a master's. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Yep. Yeah, man. And I was like, yo, I, I'm, I don't have the time to process this right now. I'm going to come back to it later. So once I started doing the boost post and promo years later, I went back in. I was like, man, shit. I don't know Even what's though. going on. Even though I don't know. <laughs> you know, so, big soul convert. <laughs> none of this shit. And so I ended up taking a uh, Facebook ads class. I'm not going to shout them out because I got other stuff coming. But I took a Facebook ads class and it broke down everything that was inside of there. And so once I learned about Facebook Pixel, for those of you who don't know that's you got to have Facebook Pixel installed on your website because Facebook Pixel, Pixel basically takes attendance on your website. Mm -hmm. It keeps track of who's there, how long they stayed, what they clicked on. So if you ever want to run ads to them again, you can say, hey, this person clicked on this color T-shirt. Let's run an ad for them with this color T-shirt as opposed to run an ad for them with this nail polish. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't want to run ads that don't apply to them. And Facebook Pixel allows you to do that. So I learned that. I learned the ins and outs of that. And once, just like y'all were just saying, I knew I was feeling the same way. It was the same about the music industry. Like I knew people were, were confused. So mm -hmm. I needed Group 82 Music. So I said, let me start like a social media ads agency, Group 82 Media. So that's what we did. So Group 82 Media, we, we would build out your website. We run ads for you. We help you hire interns, all that stuff. We scaled back from that. Cause like I said, we got some more stuff coming, but that was a revenue stream. Um, I took my free ebook. I made it for sale on Amazon. That's the revenue stream. I got a lot of affiliate links on my videos. Y'all click any of those. That's a revenue stream. One of them is monthly. I get that re residually. I get paid on Instagram badges. I'm about to start getting paid for Instagram ads on some of my videos. I get paid on YouTube ads. The past three months, we made $8,000 off of YouTube ads each month. So you got all these streams of income coming in outside of music. Your music's just a foundation for it, but you got to find other ways to bring in money. Mm. Hey, I got to give it to him. Hey, because it's beautiful. Uh, we talk with it with our, one of our, our favorite people, man, Brother Dre, Andre C. Hatchett. He talks about that all the time. Like people want to build seven streams of income. We see that shit. It looks sexy. It sound good, but you do, it doesn't mean going out outside of your seven different yeah. damn businesses. Seven different self-employed streams of income. Like like you just broke down to everybody. Everything you did was within the domain of what you was already doing. Yeah, and I think that's just so major, bro. And mm -hmm. I do I do want to ask you a little bit more with like Group Eighty Two Media. Like, what was the process looking like when you building out that team? True, man. Shit. So the thing about Group 82, which is why we're starting to like, you know, go in kind of different directions. Everything was dependent on me, man. You know, like I had like the Group 82 music, like I was the expert on all that shit. Group 82 media, I was the expert on Facebook ads and all that. So when I would hire a team, it was to teach them stuff I already knew. So like for Group 82 music, I didn't have time to hunt them playlists after a while. And I knew other people wanted to know the Spotify game. So I hired, I hired Spotify and business development interns to hunt the playlists for me so they can under, understand that. Um, when, it, when it came to graphic design, I wasn't about to learn that stuff. Graphic designers are a dime a dozen. There's so many people that are in college. So we offered a graphic design internship and we 
we hit the ball out of the park on the first one we hired. Her name's Cassie. We got her. She was a sophomore at Penn State. She's about to graduate in May in Penn State. She's been with us the whole time. Like, I love Cassie. We drafted Shout out, her. Cassie. Shout out, Cassie. She's LeBron of our company. She Anything you see graphic design, she she did that shit. So we we got her, made her an intern, and we started paying her. We've been paying her for like two years now. And then um, video editing. I didn't know that. And I wasn't about to learn that. Once again, hire interns. A lot of people don't know this. If you have an LLC, you can hire interns. You can hire unpaid interns because a lot of them need college credit, especially right now. So you can get them have an unpaid remote internship or even if you want to pay them, it's, it's up to you. People are looking for that. And so I just use that to my advantage because in exchange for them working for us, I'm teaching you the Spotify game. I'm helping Cassie build her portfolio for graphic design. Now she, can, she got everything with us, like video editors. These schools don't teach them social media video. And I, I, if y'all want to talk about college, that's a whole nother episode. Don't get me started <laughs> on that shit. But they're not teaching them social media video, right? So I'm teaching them, you, this is what you got to do on Instagram. This is why I picked this color blue. This is why I picked this font. This is why this meme works. This matches my personality. What you did is going to weaken and not emphasize this point of the video. Cut the music off so they can hear this because this is serious. Turn the music up because that way they can vibe with it. Like there's so many things that go into these videos that they're not teaching. So when you hire interns, if you give them something in exchange, they'll love the work for you. I got money on my mind. I'm just trying to get some dough. I ain't picking up my lot unless it's money on the phone.